So here in Australia, we're home to more than 20 species of freshwater turtle. And most of our freshwater turtles are, are pretty specialized to here in Australia. They're all, with the exception of this guy, what we call side neck turtles. The only one who's not a side neck turtle is this part, the pig nosed or fly river turtle. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So stick around guys, we're talking about a really interesting turtle. <laughs> So the pignose turtle is native to the northern parts of uh, the Northern Territory. We know them as pignose turtles here in Australia, and they are also found in Papua New Guinea, where they're known as fly river turtles, named after basically the major river basin in the southern part of Papua New Guinea. And within those habitats, they eat a wide variety of things from fruit down to insects. They're, they've got a really broad diet. But as I said, they're actually very different to our other turtles. All the turtles here in Australia, other than this guy, are what we call side neck turtles. When they pull their shell in, they pull their head to the side. There's also some side neck turtles in South America. This guy here, of course, pulls his head straight back, like a lot of the turtles in Asia and other parts of the world, which makes them unique as far as Australian turtles go. While there is other turtles with this same neck as he around other parts of the world, this guy's also so unique that he's the only member of his family. So the pignose turtle has no living close relatives anywhere in the world. They're also unique as far as Australian turtles go because they've got flippers. They're basically like a freshwater version of a sea turtle. So they're sort of a, an interesting halfway point, a missing link maybe, between the freshwater turtle species and the marine turtle species. All of our other freshwater turtles here in Australia, while they've got webbed feet, they're still feet. So they're able to get around on land. These guys have little flippers. They've also got a shell that's covered with a leathery skin. And their most cool feature is, of course, their little piggy nose that they use this little sort of proboscis of a nose to stick out of the water, get a breath without exposing the rest of their body. So they're really, really well adapted for their environment. They're also far more aquatic than our other turtles. While all our freshwater turtles are, of course, aquatic, they come out to bask. They spend a fair bit of time out on dry land. Uh, our eastern longnecks in my neck of the woods, they're found a long way from water, where they're traveling from one dam to another. And these guys spend their entire lives in the water. They're kept very differently to other turtles because they're so aquatic. In fact, the only time a pignose turtle is really going to be found on dry land is when they're laying their eggs. Females lay on sandy riverbanks. They need a particular type of habitat to lay their eggs in. Pignose turtle eggs can actually wait until it rains and the nest floods and the babies will dig up through the wet sand and into the river, meaning that pignose turtle, if it's a male, may never be on dry land in its life. So these guys are really, really aquatic compared to the other freshwater turtles that we have in Australia. It's a really different lifestyle. Once they hatch, they're only little tackers, it takes up to 18 years before they're gonna be old enough to actually breed of their own. When you combine this with the fact that these guys generally only breed every second year in the wild, this places them at risk. Any animal with a slow reproductive rate and slow rate of maturity is gonna be placed at risk if we put too much pressures on their populations. And there's a couple of pressures that have been placed on these guys. This is added to by the fact that they're pretty hard to breed in captivity. Their unique lifestyle, the fact that they need very large bodies of water, sandy banks to breed on, uh, means that they're not very often bred in captivity. The only people who really breed these that I've ever heard of basically live within the natural range of them and they're keeping them almost in a, a fenced in semi wild state, letting nature take its course. So we need to make sure that they're looked after because we can't rely on mass producing these guys if we need to release them into the wild. Now in Papua New Guinea, one of their major threats is collection for the pet trade and also people digging up their eggs. Those eggs are either incubated for the pet trade and they're also a food source. In fact, over in Papua New Guinea, as many as 95% of pignose turtle eggs every year are dug up either by human beings for food or for, for sale into the pet trade or by predators, which puts them at more risk in Papua New Guinea than here in Australia. Here in Australia, it's a bit of a different story. You see, ordinarily, about 23% of pignose turtle eggs were eaten by yellow spotted monitors, a goanna species found in Northern Australia. Now, 100 years ago, we brought the cane toad to Australia and it's been a massive detrimental impact on across a massive variety of the species. Northern quolls, lots of our snakes, and our goannas have been hit really hard. And the yellow spotted monitor has been hit harder than almost any of them. Their populations have crashed, and it means that egg hatching rates or survival rates of pignose turtles have gone up as much as 23% uh, since the introduction of cane toads. Now, this doesn't make it a good idea that cane toads are here, but it's an interesting example that what's decimated a lot of animals in Australia has had some roll-on effects, and uh, animals who are whose predators have been removed are actually doing slightly better. It means that here in Australia, they're classed as near threat. So they're not endangered like they might be in other parts of the world, but they're certainly something that we need to, to look after and monitor. Because while they're only near threatened here, like we said, they mature slowly, they breed slowly, and they're difficult to breed in captivity, which means they're not an animal that we want to have to ever rely on 
breeding in captivity to conserve in the wild. We want to make sure we conserve them in their wild state. So one thing that you can do to help pig nose turtles is if you are a reptile keeper from anywhere far around the world, is uh, try to avoid buying wild caught reptiles. These guys are very hard to breed, but there is pig nose turtles in other collections around the world. And the reason for this is, is as many as 95% of their eggs, a lot of their eggs are collected in Papua New Guinea for the pet trade. And this has left them as an endangered species in Papua New Guinea. So we don't wanna be having to take stuff from the wild unless you're in a position to actually add to their conservation. And the average keeper at home is not gonna be doing that. It's gonna be a turtle in a tank that's been taken out of the wild that's not contributing to the ecosystem or the population it should. And if you can't get your hands on them, there's lots of other amazing turtles that you can have and still learn about these guys through us, through other facilities like here at Lilydale High School, uh, aquariums, things like this. So if you do keep reptiles, please try and keep captive bred reptiles. They're better for you, better for the reptiles, better for the ecosystem. Now, I hope you've enjoyed learning about the pig nose turtle. This is one species I've always wanted to be able to film and show you guys, and I'd love to keep them one day myself. But this guy here is actually part of the collection at Lilydale High School. He's one of a couple of hundred animals that the students here look after and feed and keep, and they breed a lot of their animals as well, which sets them up for careers in zookeeping and zoology and biology and all sorts of amazing stuff. So if you could do us a favor, check out Lilydale Reptile Room on Facebook, leave them a comment and tell them that Wicked Wildlife sent you because they've been kind enough to let us here take up their morning and film lots of their cool animals. But if you haven't already also, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, all that. Check on back next week because we've got lots more cool Australian wildlife. But between now and then, be nice to wildlife, have a good one and take care guys. See you next week.